Bonjour, welcome and howdy, and welcome to the Farg Motorport. Behind me, this is the subject of this video, and it is, surprise, surprise, an AMX 13. But you will note by the large superstructure on the rear that this is a self-propelled gun. So we're doing a bit of filming now. We did a little bit earlier before, but it's been very cold and very wet, so this is our first opportunity to introduce this to you. It's the standard AMX 13 chassis. It's running with the usual uh, flat eight petrol engine inside of it. So this is around 1952, I think this particular one. What's quite interesting about it is, as you probably know, the AMX tank had lots of different variants that were made, ones that carried troops, mortars, radio kit. We have tank destroyers, and also we had this, which is the self-propelled gun. So this is a 105 millimeter gun, it's a very short barrel on there. This one is a Swiss model. So although it was made by AMX and in France, it was to be exported to the Swiss. There was one um, prototype that was made that was sent off to them. They said okay to the order, and then these were produced. Only four were actually produced before the order came to an end. So this is quite a rare beastie indeed. So there's only four of these SPGs left. Well, we are motoring up the M5 to a private collection in the north of the UK, and we're picking up something that's quite special. So this is an AMX 13. As if you know the channel, we look a lot at French. 105 millimeter gun in a turret that actually rotates, so the casement. The French version, obviously, it was a static casement, sort of big box, basically, on the back of the tank. This one's in a turret that rotates. So, join us. We're travelling up now. We'll collect it. We're bringing it back, and we'll do an in-depth walk around of it uh, when we get back uh, to the unit. But for now, it's just a bit of a taster, so you can see this really rare beast moving, being loaded, and us bringing it back down to the Farg Motorport.
the diffs and this is the outside right hand lateral brake. There is a rebuild plate on here or construction plate. I think it says 1959. Um, it looks like it, 1959. The fluid levels, probably in everything, but just while I'm here on this one, I'll just have a look at what the diff oil looks like. Uh, it looks clean, definitely have that changed just in case there's some sort of moisture in there as well. I'm just gonna have a sniff actually. See, it's the, uh, seems to be the right oil in there. And then we got to the engine. So we've got the carburetor on this side. Okay, and the accelerator's down here. This is the fuel coming in. And we've got a choke on here, which hardly ever got used, to be honest. Um, and then we've got another carburetor on this side again, the Zenith. And the fuel line is somewhere in there. And we're gonna take those off and run a fuel line directly round the engine and out through that gap by the driver and into the back where we'll have a canister. The actual fuel line itself that's currently got is this black one here. It's a bit corroded and on this side it's non-original pipe so it looks like um, a bit very hardened plastic there so it's best to bypass those. This is the fuel line that was attached to the both carburetors and if you actually look at it it is completely fractured all the way along its length so that is highly dangerous uh, so I will seek out a replacement part for this um, as I said I'll fit that but if this is an indication of what's happened to the fuel lines I suggest that quite rightly they should be completely replaced okay so I started to remove this and when I rotated this brass nut it's actually got a fracture all the way through it's completely broken so the fact is if you're putting fuel down here under any sort of pressure it's going to push against this and leak out so that's got to be replaced as well I'll try and find one um, I don't know if I've got any of these unions I might have but I'll have to go through and see what I can find and we'll replace all of this uh, because that is not serviceable. Now I've got the SPG in the workshop which is great so uh, we can work in all winds and weathers now. What we're going to do is we need to elevate that gun so we can start working or looking at uh, the breech. To do that, because uh, we're pretty tight for space in here as you can see behind me, we're going to rotate the turret to the left, elevate the gun up and then rotate the turret back. So it's a good opportunity to show you now how easy it actually is and how to rotate the turret on one of these SPGs. So we've got Wheeler up in there already. I'll take you up with a camera and let's see him, the master at work. Right, okay. 
So, oh, I'll have to come in a bit more, I think. I'll come into the turret with you. There we are. So you can see it's quite a spacious turret we're working in here, but do you remember there's quite a few people would have been in here. So we've got two winders. We've got one, which is the elevation. So he's doing that now. And then we've got one over there, and that is the rotation. To the right hand side of that rotation one is sort of like, looks like a tap top. We've got to make sure that's undone, because that's just um, holding the turret in place. So what we'll do is we'll get Will, uh, we'll give him instructions. Chris, you all right to uh, give us instructions to make sure yep, we're facing the right position. I'm going to try and open up the, uh, the hatch here. So we're going to try, does it? Seems to be lifting. I right, can rotate it. Oh, hey, we are, in, we are in business. So I go up to the commander's cup, I'll be able to see. Goodness me, this is the smoothest video ever created. Before. Yeah, it's, people love it. It gives them motion sickness with a bit of luck. And that give you half a feeling of what being inside of one of these things is like. Right. Okay. We're looking good. There we go. We've got Chris down the front. Okay. Rotate to your left. Hello. That's it. There we go. Keep going. Do you think he's going to miss that light there, do you reckon? Nice and easy that, isn't it? The way that goes up. Let me show you, oops. That's really good, because that's getting us access to the rear of the gun. I think that'll be it, actually. What does that look like, Chris? Yeah, that's good. Look at that, looks like it was designed for it. Hang on, let's make sure we're square. I think that's it, isn't it? So, for those of you that are keen watchers and uh, have been watching this video from the beginning, you will in a moment notice that Baz has had a sudden and unexpected change of uniform. Which he seems to have borrowed off a giant. So, as you can tell by my attire, I've had to get changed because I've just got completely soaked in the hydraulic fluid that was uh, holding the gun in place. So we've just compressed the barrel. That obviously put pressure onto the uh, recuperators. Those were filled with oil. We had backed them off slightly and it produced a jet, uh, a very specific jet of oil, which shot straight out the back of the turret and completely saturated me in fluid. So I've had to do an emergency change into some overalls someone's lent me, but now we need to go in and start tidying up uh, where all that oil is. But what's great news, we'll go and have a look now, is the gun is now recalled and we're able to see that breach really clearly. So let's go and have a look. God, it is everywhere. Are the rags inside, aren't they? I think there was a bag of them, Chris, a white bag over there. So what you can actually see, where was the, where did the oil come out from? Was it that top one? Yeah. What, the, um, the filler hole in the top? Yeah. Okay, so what happened was, we put um, ratchet straps on and pulled the gun back and took off the, um, the filler caps on this major recuperator there on the left at the top. What happened, we did have it actually covered with uh, cardboard to and uh, materials to try and catch it, but it blew that off and it shot a jet of uh, <laughs> hydraulic fluid all over me and all out the back of the turret. So we're now trying to mop this up. But it's good preservative, it's good for the skin, but it's not good for my image yeah. in such large yeah. orange boiler suit. Okay, so here we are inside of the turret. We're now looking at the gun. So here's the breech. I'll bring a light over so you can see a bit better. Okay, so there's the breech right in front of us here. And you see that it's in the up position at the moment, so we have to retract that. Well, in fact, we're going to take the breech out, so it's actually going to come up towards us anyway. Um, you can see the, uh, the oil-filled recuperator here. So that's where just shot out about 
a gallon of oil all over me and all over the inside of the turret so we're all cleaning that up at the moment and then these are the actual rams that the gun would normally operate on it's great to see them they seem to be in really good nick as well so i think this has been um kept inside there's not much uh water ingress into it so there we go and we're going right down to the bottom there you can actually see and it's difficult to get sort of a, a sense of it but here's the uh, turret ring going around and my feet at the bottom and these ridiculous overalls that i'm now wearing and what we need to do is we are going to be deactivating this to american specifications and so therefore this part here which is a high pressure area of the barrel we're going to have to unfortunately cut a hole in to 105 millimeters across to meet the ATF requirements. So that's one element we'll be doing. And also we'll have to do some uh, some work with this breech once we get the specification through, uh, see what we need to do. So what we're gonna do now is try and get all this loose paint off of the gun, because it's going everywhere and carry on mopping up all the hydraulic oil and then um, buy myself some new overalls, I think. Remember, remember, 5th of November, to subscribe or you get to see no more of this. <laughs> so the plan is we're going to try and use a piece of wood here attached to the front of the forklift to push the gun back in because now we know it goes back and forth travel that's really good but we want to get that breach out so let's go and push it in Excuse me having a biscuit. It's tea time, but we're, uh, we're flat out on this. Okay. So this vehicle is going to be exported from the UK and it's going to the US of A, across the pond. To do that, it needs to be deactivated to what's called the ATS standards. So I think that stands for alcohol, tobacco and something else. It's like the American body that makes sure everything, all the licenses are paid and taxes are due, etc. So what we're going to do is we have to deactivate this to the ATS standards. And that involves us recoiling the gun, cutting a hole in the high pressure chamber. So that's basically where the cartridge expands, well, where the cartridge powder is uh, ignited. And we need to cut a hole in the top of that part of the barrel so you can never put a round in it again. Also, we need to drop out the breech block. The gun has got to be in battery. That means it's got to be engaged and fully forward. For now, we're just making sure that this gun can travel forward and backward. Take a look. And there we go. Yes, it's in. We can see yeah. this is where the hydraulic pistons will be. They're not showing anymore, so the gun is fully compressed. So, this is a breech block that's out of the gun, so we're going to get into the 105 in a minute and do it uh, live, so to speak. What we've got here is the actual firing pin is here, and that is depressed through, it's spring-loaded, and it pops out the face here. If you can just about see the hole there, this is where the pin comes out, hits the back of the cartridge and sets it off. To take the breech block out <coughs> of one of these tanks, you need to make sure that the pin has not fired, so therefore it needs to be cocked. And then you look in the back of the breech block and you've got this. The firing pin is held in by this long, longitudinal piece of steel here. And what we need to do is pull this out. This is usually held on a fork when it's inside the gun. So this actually needs to be rotated 90 degrees. Now you can't do that, impossible to do that, because it's held in place here. <clears throat> so for the AMX series of tanks you need one of these and this here is basically the 
fire and pin removal tool. What we need to do is to slide this over, pushing this horseshoe shape down, and it will release this mechanism, enabling us to turn this 90 degrees and pull it out, and therefore then remove the firing pin. So this is the firing pin removal tool. So this slides down over the back of the mechanism, and which is basically pushing it flat. Right, so now this pin, you're able to rotate it 90 degrees, he says, and then that comes out. So this is the firing pin retaining bolt. So just clean that off so that goes down here on my immaculately cleaned table. And now to get the pin out, we can actually again, we'll use that to depress this. We remove the fire and pin removal tool. Oops. And there we go, this is the firing pin. Voila! Now we've got the firing pin out, which is great, we need to remove the breech block. The breech block goes up. You can't get the breech block out when it's in this position. Okay, when the gun is fully forward, because this bar has been welded on to stop that. So we need to recoil the gun, i.e. to bring it backwards, so we can actually pull that breech block up. So let the beach breech block out. There's Courtney saying it over and over again. Underneath, I've got two. 